to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 242. That's dos, cuatro, dos. How are you guys doing? Como estas? Bien? Amazing. How am I feeling? Perfecto, actually. Thank you for asking. I'm feeling good, man. As per usual, this is Sober October month. I got back from a good workout. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling powerful. I'm going to do um, two workouts today because I mentioned before, Monday and Fridays are my um, dub two a days because I want to ensure I have a solid week. And then if I go off the rails on a Saturday, on a Sunday, I can do. Obviously, I'm not doing that because it's October, but I'm trying to set up a structure where I have two a days on a Monday and two a days on a Friday. So I'm basically bookending um, my workouts in a good way so that it can set a good precedent and set a good little mind. I can have a good mindset going into the weekend because I've already done two a days on a Monday and a Friday, it's unlikely that I'm going to go too crazy on a Friday and Sunday because I don't want to start back again from like minus 10. I want to start from like, I want to restart my workout week on a good level. So it's going to make me kind of um, cognitively aware of what I've done previously and not to kind of undo all my good work from the previous weeks or from the week that I've just done it, right? So I'm feeling good, feeling strong, feeling powerful. Like I said, I'm, I've got a workout today I did. I'm going to go probably do a running workout at the e- evening when I go back from work. I'm going to probably do some sprinting training around where I live. There's like a little circle thing that I run around, probably do an 800 meter sprint. That'll probably work out, no, 400 meter sprint, sorry, that'll work out pretty well. A couple of those and then come back, change and then see how the rest of my evening goes. But how are you guys doing? Okay, good? Boom, banging. I'm, I've been pumping out the podcast these couple of, past couple of weeks, which is no... It shouldn't be no surprise though, really, innit? The moment you take away something like going out and drugs and alcohol is the moment suddenly your fucking horizons open up and you start to do the things that you should be doing, right? Number one, like reading, right? I've just about finished um, this book, Gomorra, from the hit TV show, Gomorra. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. It's on Sky Atlantic now at the moment. Can you see that, right? Can you see that? Can you see that? Yep, 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 yep. Um, just about finished that. I've finished reading so many books on my iPhone. It's not even funny. Like, really? I've got a few of them I've taken off my iPhone. I've re- I've finished listening to The Obstacle. Um, sorry, Still Listen to Key by Ryan Holiday, which is really good. I'm going to get a physical copy of that. Um, I've just started reading the Edward Snowden book, as you can see there, via my phone. Um, what else have I read? I finished quite a lot of books, actually. I don't know what... I think I've taken most of them off my phone. Um, yeah, I have, haven't I? I finished that. What else I finished? I finished another book as well. Oh, I just got a few, actually. Forget all that stuff. I've got some more books I'm going to power bang out until the end of the year. Again, I, I kept saying I'm going to read four books a month. But I think going through now, I'm just going to read as many as I can. Just going to get through them. And when I finish them, buy some more. I'm not going to just stop myself from the four. Because I, I can generally get through quite a few books in four weeks anyway. And if, I, if I'm reading like an hour to work, an hour back from work, um, and whatever, 40 minutes on lunch break after I finish eating my food, I like to kind of, you know, then I don't like to eat and then read. It kind of is a bit annoying because you always have to fold the book and it's just hard to do it and you might end up with food all over your pages. So I tend to just like quickly eat my stuff, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then have the rest of the time to read. So hour to work, hour back from work, 40 minutes at lunch. And then of course, anytime I'm at home, so maybe in the morning, I try and put in like a quick half an hour and rip, smash with some pages um sometimes walking to work as well from the station you can quickly smash out a few pages too um loads of events you can loads of occasions especially in the weekends too when i wake up a bit late i can just lie in bed and just like turn my lamp on and just switch through pages so it's quite easy to get through a couple of pages of a book but again it means you're gonna have to exchange your smartphone for a book all the habits that you usually have in terms of grabbing your smartphone just take your book out and you'll be able to um, or take your book out sounds like something else, doesn't it? But I don't mean that. But take your book out, especially like if you're going to the toilet or something um, and you're going to, you know, ha- have, a, have a little shit and probably take your book with you and then you can probably smash through a few pages of that um, when you're sat there. And I've got a few more I bought, actually. A few more books I've bought. If you're interested to check them out, I'm going to show you anyway, so you've got no choice. But um, uh, first three, I'm going to develop into three, make it easy. I've got three books here. I've got six overall I'm going to be reading in these next few weeks. Can you see that? Right? Can, can, you, can you see that? Can you see this? Can you see this? Right? Can you? There we go. Let me put it up to the camera. Okay, cool. There. Got it. So, I've got three books. Number one, I've got Ernest Hemingway, The Old Man in the Sea. I've had this on my um, watch list or my Amazon watch list, wish list for a while. Um, I've been trying to get for as many Ernest Hemingway books as I can. They're usually quite small, usually quite thin, extremely well written. And just, you know, it's good to kind of get into something that isn't, you know, my usual self-help book shit. So that's nice, right? Old, the old man in the sea. So check that out. Then I've got William Gibson's Pattern Recognition. I got recommended this, I think, via listening to the uh, GQ Style podcast. 
I think they mentioned this recently in passing, so I'm just going to quickly smash through that. It's three in the series, Spook Country and Zero History. So I'm just going to finish all these and see how good William Gibson is as, uh, as an author. And, you know, whether or not it's my cup of tea. Again, I don't read many novels, but, you know, here we go. And then I've got another book, of course, right into my wheelhouse of the stuff that I kind of like. If you know, I like, I'm really very much interested into the seedy underbelly of the drug industry and just how people go about kind of functioning in that area. The different personalities and just the amount of money that gets funneled through, how it doesn't really get stopped, the war on drugs. There's just so many things, so many social political things that you can learn uh, through drugs. Similar, like, um, I think similar, similar vein to, I was listening to, there's this a YouTube channel called The Whiskey Vault and The Whiskey Tribe. I recommend you check them out if you're a fan of whiskey. And they essentially are just whiskey sommeliers who kind of review whiskeys. They also have their own um, liquor store in Texas where they kind of, you know, again, stock and sell loads of whiskeys. They have their own brand of whiskey that they sell. And they just generally are very informative. They've made a whole community around whiskey. And it's really informative, really cool. But I got um, the um, one of the guys there, who I think is accredited sommelier, He's very much, or both of the dudes actually that present on the show, they are, um, they have a good, they have a very good, um, they're very worldly, especially even for, even more so for Americans. And I'm sure lots of it has to do with the fact that they're really into whiskey. Getting into whiskey, I suddenly go, you know, you go down a rabbit hole, as they always say on the show. Um, and you start kind of thinking about loads of different reasons that, loads of different things that might contribute to why this whiskey tastes the way it does. The history, when it was founded, what happened when it was founded, who the founders were, what they were going through, loads of interesting things. You can just go deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to a point where, you know, you are then, you know, kind of brewing your, or kind of making your own whiskey. So I guess this, I won't make my own cocaine, I guess, in some regard, but I'll get an understanding of how these big operators who are quite talented in one area, but choose to unfortunately do it if in an area that's um, dealing with illicit drugs, but how they go about kind of, you know, making this candy machine keep rolling on. And the book is actually called Candy Machine. It's called How Cocaine Took Over the World, and it's by a guy called Tom Feeling. So if you want to check that out, you can too. I haven't read it yet. I've just got it in today from Amazon. Um, then the next three books I have here are rather interesting, really different all in all. There's two hardbacks, right? Two hardback books there and one paperback. The paperback book to start off with is by Stephen Fry, absolute legend. I'm sure you guys are familiar, UK guys are familiar with Stephen Fry and probably a few US people too um, due to his collaborations with Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson in the last few years. He did an interview with Dave Rubin too, but just a really um, funny, quick-witted, charismatic, intelligent I mean, obviously intelligent kind of um, philosopher, uh, for lack of a better term, in the UK. I mean, you've written this book called um, Heroes, Mortals and Monsters, The Quest for Adventures. At the back, it says there are heroes and then there are Greek heroes. Join Jason aboard uh, the Argos as he seeks the Golden Fleece and see Atlanta outrun all men before being tricked with golden apples. Soldier through the Heracles' uh, 12 labors. Uh, shiver in terror under the stone-cold gaze of Medusa and witness wily up. Op- 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 obsidious or odious odipus odipus sorry solve the, <laughs> the riddle of the sphinx from white knuckle chases to twisting labyrinths impossible puzzles to blood curling monsters heroes is filled with dramatic funny tragic and timeless tales of what we mortal men and women are truly capable of at our heroic best so yeah definitely i'm definitely looking forward to, to reading this i think it's gonna be really funny loads of probably giggle moments in that and then i've got two very interesting books of the of the moment um, you got Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. He was a dude that was um, basically instrumental in kind of putting to piecing together the story um, to do with uh, Harvey Weinstein and all the Me Too stuff. So he's basically put it all into a book, which is essentially kind of, you know, deals with the whole issue. Um, and the subtitle is called Lies, Spies, Conspiracy and to Protect the Prote- Predators. So it's going to be very enlightening to kind of read this entire book. Um, and then, of course, uh, the legendary Elton John autobiography called Me, which I'm sure has been serialized a few times on, on on the media. I'm sure you guys are aware of it, but I'm eager to check out what it's like. Oh, look at the back cover of him performing. Where is that? Is that Wembley Arena? Oof, look at that. Mamma mia. So, yeah, rec- rec- eager to check out all, all six books between now and maybe the end of November. I probably should get through all of these. So, again, going forward, I'm going to try and make a review of all the books I read. And make sure that I let you guys know what I think of them. Any kind of tidbits I got from them that are very insightful. But, you know, they're all very good books on the, on the, on the just on the surface. I think I'm going to get something out of everything. And hopefully I can then apply those knowledges or insights into my everyday life.